You got us love. Good afternoon, or good morning, or good evening, or good day to you all. I'm Jeremiah J. Man Monero. What was it? Like, to you all. And I'm Jeffrey Scott Stanton. <laughs> Welcome to Must You Stay About Something or Nothing or Everything. So before we went uh, live, and I'm still waiting for you on Instagram, by the way. I'm just sitting here. I'm trying mm, to get there. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Uh, but before we went Your live. Your audio is coming in weird. You're like muffled and echoey. Yeah? Yeah. Let me try. Let me put both my earpieces in and see if that helps at all. Let's see. If you think I'm muffled and whatever, say something in the chat. Something in the chat, huh? Something in the chat. Uh, before we started, Jeffrey was doing a uh, torture technique that they they banned in the <laughs> in the. In the I, sent, I sent the request the, to join, but what's going on here? Oh, there it is. I was talking. So he was playing like random audio, like was it YouTube ads or something? And and it's in my ear. And it's I, like, what? are you sure? Dude, I, that's in your brain. You swear is where it is. You swear. I, was, I wasn't doing anything. They heard it in the in the Zoom. You heard it in the Zoom, right, CC? Yeah, that's, com that's coming in from your side because I didn't hear anything. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> I was like, please, there it is. You're doing it again. It's water, some kind of water. Now I gotta. <laughs> All right, do me a favor. If you're on Facebook. Tell me, let me know if you can hear this if you're on Facebook or Instagram. Do you hear this water? Because I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, see, all of a sudden now I have to go for a swim. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's how I know it's okay? Jeff because I have multiple sources of audio. And if I went like this, I know it's coming. If I mute his audio. No, I just, I just went to loop back and it's not there. I have nothing coming in. Yeah. Okay. Somebody's no. trying to join our, our our Instagram. Do you know Richard? I don't know. Whatever. Let him join them. Let him join them. Bump them out. You can do that. Yeah. We'll quiz him. Join. Let him join. Whoever wants to join, you got to join. You can join us. I'm telling you, it's water nothing. and birds. Do me a favor, if anyone is on Instagram or Facebook, and let me know if you hear water or not. Yeah, he's in the rainforest. See, Chris Newton said it. He's got a good ear. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh. it's okay. Hey, uh, we got rainforest in Puerto Rico. I feel like I'm at home. I'm ready. Let's go. See, all of a sudden it stops. All of a sudden it's mystery, mystery solved, folks. Columbo here. Uh, okay. I'm trying to. I don't have anything else. I'm going to get stuff open, but nothing showing audio playing. And on my loopback, it doesn't show anything either. Hold on. I can hear you on Instagram, but I can't hear you on. Oh, something's getting. I don't know. I, I don't know. Okay, so what are we there, talking about now, today? As this is much to say about nothing. Perfect. I would like to say this. Yep. Yeah, See, something does, is strange going does on. Effects, does my sound effects work? Yeah. Yeah, they do. This is Did you hear that? No. Did you hear my sound effect? Mm -mm. Really? Ten, nine, eight. Well, it's blasting on my ears. Something's something wrong with the audio on here, guy. All right, let's just go. We're at our original topic, and look, it's much to say about nothing. So, if you're on the Zoom with us on Element, just put something in the chat. What are, what are some things you want to randomly talk about today? And or if you're on the Facebook or the Instagram or the yeah, that's the only place we are right now, right? Facebook, and Instagram. We're on LinkedIn too. Actually, I added LinkedIn. Are today. we? Yeah. Oh. Hi, LinkedIn. 
I'm not monitoring that at all. So if you're going to post something there, <laughs> I'll see it later, folks. <laughs> can, oh, yeah, if somebody's okay. watching us on Facebook, could you comment so I can see if the live comments are coming over? There's nobody watching us on Facebook. There's <laughs> nobody watching us anywhere. Why do we do this? <laughs> Well, today I wanted to talk about uh, mistakes that entrepreneurs make. And Jeffrey said, meh. No, I said Pretty blah. Blah. Yeah, well, I mean, same thing. Meh. Like, eh, that's boring. And I'm like, do you have any other suggestions? He's like, no. I'm like, Thank thanks a lot. Cool, man. Uh, so here we are. Here we are. So, no, we can talk about mistakes entrepreneurs make. I, I, think, I think that's an okay topic. If you don't have anything else to talk about. We have much to say about nothing. Maybe we have nothing to say about much things. We do. <laughs> I, so, I think, um, what are some mistakes when agents, let's just say when agents first get in the business, what are some of the mistakes they make? Oh, now we're talking about agents or entrepreneurs. Because not all agents what, are entrepreneurs. Mistake number one, not thinking that they're business owners. Okay, but if you're a business owner, okay, okay let's talk about this. If you're yeah, a business like owner, are you automatically See? an entrepreneur? I think they're kind of one and the same, don't you think? What if you own Microsoft? Are you an entrepreneur? Yeah, you passed it a little bit. You're a business owner. See, this, so is, let's this see. is good. I like this a lot. Let's see what the actual definition is. Because when I was coming up with my descriptions and I went to GPT and I said, should I say business owner instead of entrepreneur? And GPT said... It depends on the audience. They're, they're pretty much one and the same. Um, okay, so the definition, Oxford. Definition? Yeah. Um, is a person who organizes and operates a business or businesses taking on a greater than normal, greater than normal financial risk in order to do so. Okay. Now, if I look at yeah, same thing. Same thing. Uh, Web Webster has the same. The same. But if I look at Investopedia, it says an entrepreneur's individual starts their own business based upon an idea that they have or a product that they create, while assuming most of the risks and something. So I don't know. So I don't necessarily know if you're a business owner. Are you still? Because listen, I know some business owners have been in business a long time that I would not con consider them entrepreneurial. Yeah, they buy a business, right? Would you say? Yeah. So yeah, or if they've been in business for that long, that it's no more that you know, I don't, I don't, I think they, I think they may have lost that entrepreneurial mindset. They may have been entrepreneurial at once. That's a good point. So not, and then you lose the entrepreneurial mindset. All business owners are entrepreneurs, but all entrepreneurs are aren't business, owners? business owners either. No, because you could be the entrepreneurial. Starters. Let me look up. This yeah, you know again. this section. It's a good. Yeah, look up this the definition. Well, and and I just let's just say as as a business person starting in business. On okay, so own, whatever you wanted to four define types of entrepreneurial. Four types yeah. of entrepreneurship. Four types of entrepreneurship. Small business entrepreneurship refers to opening a business without turning it into a large conglomerate or opening many chains. A single location, a restaurant, grocery shop, retail shop. Okay, like scalable startup is the next one. Scalable startup, these companies that start with a unique idea that can be built into a large scale, think Silicon Valley, and hopes to innovate a unique product or service. And you have a large company. Large company entrepreneur is a new business division created within an existing company. Um, the existing company may be well placed to branch out into other sectors, etc. And you have a social entrepreneur. Oh, hmm. The goal of social entrepreneurship yeah. is social. No, social. Oh, solo. social. Social. Okay. If the goal of a social entrepreneurship is to create a benefit to society and humankind, this form of business focuses on helping communities or the environment through their products and services. Mm. They are not driven by profits, rather by helping the world around them. And those are the companies that go out of business. No, it's the truth. Yeah, it's the truth. Like, sense. if you're yeah. going to start a company and say, hey, I'm going to save the world, if you don't make a profit, the company's not going to be in business. So how are you going to save the world? You know, I think oh. first and foremost, every single company has to be in business to make a profit or else you don't stay in business. Right. Well, I, I, but I think in the beginning when 
I mean, we're, we're going to use agents because it's mostly our audience. When agents get into real estate, they come from a background of having a job where they're like, I do just enough not to get fired. <laughs> if you look quite honestly, I do just enough That's how not most people. to get yeah, not to get fired. And so then I, I get into real estate. And what do I want to do? Same thing I've been doing for the last 20 years of my work life. Do just enough. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, there's nobody to fire you. You're just going to go out of business or be in debt to a point where you have to go back to get a real job. Yeah. How many times have people have heard that over the years? Oh, you're going to have to get a real job. You're going to have to get a real job. You're going to have to get a real job. You know, I, I think... I think... To be a successful agent, you have to be, you have to have, I, I, listen, I wouldn't even say an entrepreneurial mindset. You have to have a business owner mindset. Right. Because to me, that entrepreneurial is like, I'm going to advance things. I'm going to try something new. I'm going to do something new, you know, a new business line. And I don't think you necessarily need that. I think you need to have that business owner mentality. You need to have that CEO mentality. You know, someone once told me this is if, if you're going to open up your own business, there's certain things you need. You need a CEO, a CFO, a CMO. So you need a uh, chief executive officer, which is the visionary. You need the CFO to tell chief the financial. CEO that, hey, do we have the chief financial? Are we going to make money to do this? You know, is this going to make money? Is it going to cost us money? You need that chief marketing officer to say, how are we going to market and accomplish this? Then you have the investors. And the investor is, this is all makes sense. Am I willing to put my money into this company? And I think those are the mindsets you need as that real estate entrepreneur, real estate business owner. You need that CEO mindset. How because that's what the CEO does. CEO isn't isn't day-to-day -day operations. That's you should probably need a chief operating officer there too. Yes, let's do this. CEO, chief operate, chief uh CEO, COO, CFO, marketing C officer, CMO, and then CMO, and then investor. So I think those are the five parts. Those are the five personas you need. I like where I'm going with this. Those are the five personas you need as a real estate agent. I like what I you like. What I like where I'm going with my own stuff. D different hats you have to put on. Yeah, yeah. It, it really is. It. it I think it's you need. See, because the CEO doesn't handle day to day operations. The CEO is the visionary. This is what we're doing next. This is where we're going. That's what most CEOs are. They don't handle day-to-day -day, day operations. So you need that mentality or that mindset or that persona in yourself of what are we doing next? How are we going to advance this? What's the next thing? Then you need yeah. the chief operations officer, COO, to actually handle the day-to-day -day operations. Who's actually doing this stuff? You need the chief marketing officer because how are we marketing this? What are we doing? Are we chief financial that? officer... How are we getting the word out? Chief financial officer is, is, are we going to make money doing this? And that's the books. Or the can we part. afford to do what we plan to do? Can we afford to do what we plan to do? And then most importantly, what I think is the investor mindset. Is it worth to put the money in to do this? Because can we afford to do something? Do we have the money to do it? Is one thing. The investor is always going to look and say, am I willing to put my money in this to get a return on my money? Or is it too much of a risk, too, too little of a risk, not enough for reward? So I think to me, if we're talking about entrepreneurial, that's what you need to be. CEO, COO, CMO, investor, CFO. But what does it start with? Vision. CEO. And then you need sales? <laughs> I, I think it goes CEO. Then I think it goes to operator. I think you need the vision and then you need the operations. Because there's a lot of people with the vision and then they keep doing the research, but without sales, your organization can't exist. Yeah. Right? Like and that's what I'll call it as the, Yeah, that, that's what I'll call it as the operator. And that's why you need the CFO. Like, hey, why are we doing this? We're not making any money on it. So, you know, if you want to put the CFO and investor together and make that just a finance guy. But, you know, I think a lot of people, you think they get into real estate and it's like, what is this? Like, uh, no, no, no one told me. No one told me what this was about. Like, they told me, you know, I, I, I watched Million Dollar Listing on TV. Flexible hours, unlimited income. I watched Million Dollar Listing. I showed three properties. Listen, 
Nothing gets million dollar listing because ninety percent of them are our people. But it's like, hey, uh, I'm going to show three properties, and then they're going to pick one, and that's it. They, we close twenty minutes later with no problems. With no problem. That's why I thought, I thought the first season. I haven't watched the second season. The first season of Kendra sells Hollywood was very realistic as a new agent because you saw how Kendra works for us in Beverly Hills. Sean Ernie Coswell's team last year. I haven't watched this. And if Kendra, if you know who Kendra Wilkinson is, um, you know who she is, or you don't, you Google her. So she went in and like they showed her bringing her kids to the open house because she had no one to watch her kids. I think out of all the shows, yeah, that that's was, realistic. It was the first. I have again, haven't seen the second season of it, but I think Kendra Sells Hollywood was a very. The first season was very realistic, and knowing Ernie and knowing. All the players that are on that show, it was very, very realistic. Very realistic. I think people get into this without a taste. And I think they, once they're in it, they realize, oh, crap, now what? You know, I, I keep on saying uh, on those Facebook groups that we're all members of, you know, friends with the guy who runs the thing, that I don't understand how people say half the things they say in there. I'm Three wearing letters. a coat. I'm wearing a coat. No, and again, and again, listen, we know the guy who the runs lab. it. I'm not saying his name. We we know the guy who runs it. And I listen, he's a genius. Absolutely a genius. Yeah. But, but all some the of the things that there, are said in there is, is scary. Yeah. It's, there was somebody posting, oh, my broker says I need to spend $2,000 a month on Zillow app, on Zillow leads. I'm new. My, this is my broker says I need to do. And everybody's like, well, how about your broker tells you how to get your own leads instead of going to Zillow leads? You know, oh, I'm a new agent. My broker's not giving me any leads. What should I do? And it's like, wait, and people are like, well, go get your own leads. Well, I don't know how to get my own leads because you got your license and did nothing else. And it's a different skill set between getting your license and then being a real estate agent and being that, again, that business owner of a real estate agent. Well, I, and, and I think um, I'll say one of the mistakes I made in the beginning was being overly confident, as you could imagine, <laughs> and not, not being willing to take advice like you know yeah. taking on those those mentors or the the more experienced agent because there's no there's no substitute for experience if somebody's been in the business 5 10 20 30 40 years i mm-hmm. came in overly confident somebody who knew about prospecting i wasn't scared of cold calling and they would say listen here kid and i'm like don't tell me kid ah i'm gonna go door knock yeah. leave me alone i'll tell you i'll show you what's what and, and i could have well, learned you a lot more but you also had a I'm time listening. when you started, which I'll say the old timers back then, yeah. a lot of them would, wouldn't share, would not tell you anything. It was like, no, you have to go out there and just do yours. You got to fail. You're never going to yeah. make it. Because that's Here's how your they phone, were brought you're into on your own. Industry. Yeah. Because that's, that's how they were brought into the industry. They were brought into the industry of, you know, kick you out to sink or swim. Mm-hmm. Not just sink or swim. It was like, here's this, here's this masonry block catch that and try, try to tread water. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm holding it up in the air. Now what? Now what are we going to do? Yeah, but I, I think, you know, if, if you're newer in the business, don't be afraid. Like, if you're not good in the, on the financial side or the investor side or the, like, for me, the numbers aren't my thing. I just want to go do, I want to go sell. And so my wife is on my team and she's the numbers. She runs, she says, you can't do this. I go, what do you mean I can't do it? It makes money. no. We can't take money from another business to put in, you know, if you have multiple streams of income, that kind of thing. It, she's the one that'll give me pull in the reins, say we can't afford to do this, or she'll say, you know what, this is making money. You should do more of that, and and it's building a team, building the right team. You, you know, I just pulled up um, things you should know about running your own real estate business. You'll mourn the you'll mourn the loss of steady paychecks. You'll quit that nine to five for a five to nine. Which is true. true. You quit that Very nine true. to five job to work a five to nine job. That's five a.m. to nine p.m. Um, it's worth it. Uh, something about your clothes, which I don't understand that comment. Um, you'll have to get used to patting yourself on the back. Yeah, I think in real estate you have to be self motivated. Absolutely, in real estate you have to be self motivated. You know, I, I think. Well, first of all, this is the thing, and I'm going to say this is I don't think, I don't think you can motivate an unmotivated pe- person. If the person is not motivated themselves, I don't think you can motivate them. 
I think you can inspire, inspire them a person to, take action. to do yeah. more. Yeah. yeah, but I don't think, I think they're not basically motivated. And motivated to me is the amount of energy you have to put into something. So if you don't have that energy to put in something, you're not willing to do it, you're not motivated. There's nothing I'm going to do to motivate you. But if you do have that energy and you are motivated, we can inspire you to do better. Um, I like this one. You'll want to quit at least once a week, at least in the beginning. I think you do. You know, you always see those posts. Um, or on, uh, on the daily. Yeah, <laughs> on the daily. I've been in this business a month and a half. I haven't sold anything yet. What should I do? I'm like, really? <laughs> you thought you were going to sell something your first month and a half? You might get something in the contract, but actually having a closing. Um, you'll gain haters disguised as friends. I think that's true. I think that's really true in the real estate. Um, and the last one is you'll be happy you took the leap if you stay there. If you stay in real estate, I think you'll be happy with it as long as like you're doing something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Chris Newton says, uh, Harvey Specter, which is from Suits. I, I, I'm actually binging that right now. It's fantastic. Said, I quit every day. I just never said it out loud. Uh, so, so true. And, and I used to say like in 2008, 2009, 2009, I'd like, I wake up unemployed every day. I wake up unemployed every day and I, I gotta, I gotta do something to survive. And, and when I said it to a couple of my friends that work real jobs, they go, how can you do that? If you don't do anything, you don't make any money. I go, well, guess what? If you don't do your job, what happens? You get fired. The only difference is I'm good at what I do, so I know I, I, I will always be employed. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as an unemployed salesperson that's really good at what they do. You don't get laid off. No, there, there's, there's no, well, well, there's the thing. There are unemployed salespeople. They're lazy. They're not knocking on doors or, or making phone calls. Right, but they're not those salespeople. Are those are order takers, right? I mean, those are the ones that those in the last couple well, of years, they're going, they're going, oh, my God, oh, you want to buy a house? Okay. <laughs> that's what they've been doing. And then, and then they write 15 offers. Eventually, one sticks because they don't—they're not skillful in their negotiations. And then they, you know they, they take listings from uh, clients that want to sell, but they don't know how to help them make decisions. And they're gone. They're going to be gone. They will be gone. They shall be gone. You know, they are gone. It's a—it's a weird business that we're in. I can't. I'm trying to see on Facebook, but I see I, for some reason I can't go on the Facebook at all while I'm on here. It's weird. Well, <laughs> yeah, right there. Uh, I'm, I, I don't know. <laughs> Something you shouldn't be Some laughing days. at. No, I, I, I'm laughing at like, I'm looking at all these things in front of me right now and I'm going, there isn't many people that could do this right now. <laughs> to be on, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, a, a Zoom and LinkedIn and looking at GPT at the same time, and and having and it's a funny you just turn you just turn red and like, oh god all this it's like everything just hit you at once, which is a good real estate thing to do when you realize everything hits you at once. <laughs> uh, jack of all trades, master of none. That's the uh, next one. What's what do, what do you mean? So say that again. Jack of all trades, master of none is, is what I'm thinking of mistakes that entrepreneurs make or people getting started in business or real estate agents, right? They say, now do you, what people forget about that quote is that that's not the full quote. Yeah. The full quote is Jack of all trades is master of none, but oftentimes better than just a master of one. That's the full quote. Yeah, oftentimes, but also oftentimes <laughs> broken out of business. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> but I think I think in in real estate, you you have to be a jack of all trades. In the I, beginning, I think you do. In the beginning, um, like you can't no, you I, can't specialize in Long Island real estate. No, 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 no. You, yeah, co correct. That's what that, I mean. That I agree. Like you can't do residential. You can't do residential, commercial, mixed, like all condos, co-ops, and I'm really great. You know, maybe in a smaller yeah. borough, like like maybe Staten Island, but even Staten Island would be tough, right? I mean, it's, it's yeah, I be tough. with the traffic. No, and, people all the time. Oh, well, you do business. Oh, I do business in New York City. Where in New York City? All five boroughs. No, you don't. You don't. Yeah. You, you don't. Because this is what I'm going to do. Show me a house in each, in, in, in all five boroughs. I'm going to see one house in yeah. each borough <laughs> yeah, today. Yes. Yeah. And you figure that one out. Yeah. Yeah. Staten Island, Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan. And, uh, that would be... 
10 hours Bronx. at least. How are you going to do that? Yeah. Absolutely. At least. That would be funny. That agent would quit that day. So this is the thing. <laughs> Jack of all trades, master of none. This was actually a Ben Franklin thing. And he said he encouraged his readers, because this was his quote, to be a jack of all trades and a master of one. Which right. I think that's what it is. That's I think in one, real yeah. estate, that's that makes the most sense. Be a jack of all trades and master of one. You know, and I think what are your, in, what's your specialty, but you still have to be, you know, you have to you have to know a little bit of everything in real estate. Well, in the beginning, it's like you're trying to figure out what you similar to like social media content, right? Same thing. It's like you, you do all of it, all of these different buckets, categories, if you will. You figure out what you really love and then you, you go, you dive into it, right? Like my thoughts, my questions. Or you, maybe I figure out that I love investment. Uh, <laughs> I love investors. I record those. Well, I'm no, I'm, those what I'm saying is like you did a lot of different content. And then that resonated yeah. with your audience and then you decided yeah. you're going to do more of it. And so like I have an agent in my office, she does 350 plus transactions a year. She's a second generation real estate agent doing investment properties. That's what she grew up doing and she loves it. Mm -hmm. Now, if it was a million dollar listing, she might refer it out because it's very specialized what she does. Working it's with investors, right. working with tenants. Work, I mean, since she was 12 years old, she was crawling through windows, <laughs> collecting rent. You know, pulling her socks over her pants because there's fleas in the, in the you know, stuff that some people would never do. Uh, but she's making a, a really great living doing it. And so she's, she's a man. And I sent her referrals. Because my first year, I, I, I did a bunch of that stuff. And I'm like, ah, that's not for me. I can't see myself doing this for a long, long time. Yeah. I think when you first start in real estate, you take anything. They, I think unwisely, you take everything that's sent to you. Anything possible you take and you run all over the place and then you realize once you do a couple of deals, you can't do that. Like you, mm -hmm. you can't, you, you can't help everyone. I think you do a disservice to try to help everyone. It's better off, you know, referring it out. Even again, you're an agent in, you're an agent in New York city and you're dealing with doing business on the upper West side and you get somebody looking in the village. Guess what? Refer it to someone in the village and get a referral fee. Your client's going to be much more happy and you're going to be much more happy. Now, well, and if you specialize in the Upper West, West Side, don't say you specialize in UWS because nobody else knows what that is. Unless you're from the Upper West Side, you know exactly what it is. But if I'm moving there, I don't know the village from the UWS. No, you should before you move here. <laughs> I want an agent that I trust. Cause, I mean, that's, but that's, that, that's a good point because it's the number one thing people look for in an agent is to help them find the right home. The right one, not a home, because we, we're not the keepers of information anymore. It's the yeah. right home. We have all this, we're inundated with all this information every, everywhere we look. And it's like, oh man, Cecilia, just tell me what to buy. I trust you. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was my favorite line that I ever had, that I ever came up with myself. And I think I came up with it myself, is we're not the keepers of the information. No, we're not the keepers. We used to, we used to be the, the like, keepers yeah, of the information. Be, now absolutely. We, now we curators and clarifiers. That's what we do. We curate and clarify the information. That's our jobs now. Okay. I'll give you that quote because I've never heard it because it sounds too complicated for me to say. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't your quote. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the difference between influence and force in entrepreneurship? That's a good question. So force is forcing someone to do something. When you influence someone, you are, as long as you're ethically influencing the person, Right. They are based upon the methods that you're using. They are making the decision to do whatever they're doing. Forcing is kind of like, you know, here's the stick, do it, do it or you get beat. Right. Influence is like, hey, here's the conversation. You here's the use. carrot. Yeah, here's the mm -hmm. carrot. Well, it's not necessarily a carrot because influence also could be the stick, but you're not forcing the person to do it. It's, it's the person's deciding to do it themselves based upon the information you're giving them or the, or the, um, tactic or influential principle that you're doing. I'm actually taking a whole entire class now with um, Cialdini, who's the um, godfather of influence and persuasion. I should just pass have some new certificate and cool. Oh, yeah. What was Sorry. Yeah. So I get to like once a week, I get to hang out with, with, with Bob. Well, that's that's a good Again, I'm going to say like when I was 20 years old and I, I lived in Queens, I was running a sales force of 60 plus people 
And I, again, I made the mistake of using force over influence because I, I felt like I'm 20 years old and I had people working for me that were 30, 40, 50, 60 years old. Mm -hmm. And I had to tell them like, listen, if you don't listen to what I say, if you don't like it, go, go join the unenjoyment line. <laughs> That's what I used to call it. And, and I, yes, I would get people to listen, but that it was a, it was not, it was a short term strategy. And I was lucky enough to have a, a regional manager at that point. Like, I understand where you're coming from here, but let's figure out the motivation of each person. Because when I looked at my numbers and I said, I have all these salespeople and I had goals that I wanted to hit. And I would say, Jeff's going to do 10. Cece's going to do 15. Chris is going to do 20. Anna's going to do 20. And I would give them their numbers rather than talking to each one and say, maybe Jeff's happy doing 10. Yep. So let's talk to Okay. So what you're doing is you're forcing, and now on the influence aspect of it, the persuasion aspect of it is you get the team together where you right. have the conversations individually with them and say, okay, what's your goal? What's your going to hit of 10? Okay, is it 10? Could you hit 12? Could you hit 15? Well, I probably could do 12. Okay, perfect. Then you get everybody together. Once everybody makes their individualized goals, you get everybody mm -hmm. together, and then you do public goals. Right. Because now you have the group sharing publicly what the goal is. First of all, so now you have social proof and you have the level of, of, of commitment because people always want to commit and be consistent. People are going to be more inclined to hit their goal. Then you also have the group goal because now you can take all those individual goals, put it together. So now you're working, Bob's working towards 12 deals, but the entire group is working towards 250 deals. Right. So you have your individual goals and then you have your group goals, which creates social proof, which creates commitment and consistency. And the other thing it's going to create is what's formed same as your unity, where everybody can get behind mm -hmm. that one goal. Because I know my goal contributes to the whole. Well, so and it's, go ahead. No, no. So it's it's amazing the amount of the 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 when I first learned about influence and persuasion and leadership and this is how to lead and it's like it was that old like you learned that seventies and eighties that do what I say you'll get a bonus that doesn't Correct. motivate people. Correct. That, yeah, do I was, what I say, you get a bonus. To say that. It, it's now, it, that's not how it works anymore. It used to be, you know, every, there was some management guru at one point during the 70s and 80s said you should always fire the bottom 10% of your people every single year. So nobody gets too comfortable. And I'm like, why would you, why would you, why would you do that? Now you got to replace. Like, well, how about, can't we get these people to move that's up? That's like the Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross mentality. Yeah. Like coffees. I don't have my coffee cup here, but I have that. Coffees for closers. Coffees for closers. Uh, but there's also a generational difference, right? Where I think brokers and managers nowadays, they go, well, these millennials, they're, they're and I'm, I can say this, I'm a millennial folks, so don't get mad at me. They say, oh, we're lazy. We don't want to work. When really we want, we want to work to live, not live to work. We're previous generations. Yeah. We're like, I'm, I'm going to work. Give me that bonus. I'll make that money, even if I hate what I'm doing. But this is what I'm supposed to do, period. And then me, I'm like, hey, let me work make enough money, and then I can go on vacation and be with the family mm -hmm. because it is, it's a better quality of life. It's just generational differences. Once you realize that, you could say, hey, millennial salesperson that works under me, uh, if we can get this done, guess what? Then you can go backpacking in, in Europe. And, and it's a, a, then you're influencing and you're motivating them. They're inspiring them to take action. So if you look at things like... Um, Maslow's hierarchy of values. Um, I'm getting a little too technical. So th there's there's certain things where people, depending upon how old they are and where they are in their life, value certain things above other things. Like it might be commitment and consistency at one point. It might be adventure at another point. So first of all, if you're a manager, you should learn because this is it's really generational how old the person are, and the hierarchy of needs is what 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 does this person value now. You know, the person who's 55 years old is going to value something totally different than the person who's 35. And this is what happens if you're trying to recruit people. Listen, you're an entrepreneur right. and you're, you're building your team or you're a broker and you're trying to recruit people and you don't understand that I'm looking for something different in my career than J-Man's looking. You're not going to recruit a lot of people or right. what you're going to do is you're going to recruit people and they're going to leave. Right. Or you recruit me and say, oh man, your commissions would be better. You're going to make more money. When really I wanted to hear that the company culture... There's things that we do as, you know, it's more fun. There's more learning opportunities. Yeah, we wanted to hear about There's the clean up the beach. We wanted to hear about, you know, what do we, what do, we do as, what's the company culture when some people a one island don't care event. about the company culture. Yeah, there's a one island event, stuff like that. that like some people want to hear about that as, as, as part of the, the, 
again, we saw about forcing or influencing, you know, work for me, I'm going to pay you the most. Guess what? That doesn't last. You know, I, I've been doing this for the past couple of months. I've been running a course on leadership. And we talk about that, about motivating people with money. When you motivate people with money, they're always motivated with money. And anyone who's willing to pay them more, they're just going to go there. Right. It's what's the other motivation? What's the other values that the person has? Is it they oh. value that close knit community? Is it they value the culture? Do they value the technology? Do they value that the company is charitable? There's so many other things there that, first of all, a lot of people, a lot of brokers, team leaders, they focus on the dollars. Like, oh, this will pay you, this is your split, this is your bonus, this is your sign on, whatever it happens to be. And then, yeah, that's great, but now that's what you have me focused on. Where I might not even known until you, if you didn't have the conversation with me that, hey, this corporate culture is great, or you know what? I don't like this corporate culture at all. I see a lot of people post, and I go back to those huge Facebook groups. I just joined whoever. Which is better, this company or that company? Well, how long have you been there for? Oh, two months. Well, right. Why did you join minutes. them in the first place? <laughs> like, you joined the company, you're there for two months, now you're leaving? It, listen, either somebody lied to you, or you didn't do your own research. Right. But it's, 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 it's difficult, you know, oh, I'm going to hire the person, I'll hire the person. If they leave in two months, they leave in two months. That costs money. That costs money. Every single person who leaves costs you money. You don't think it does. Oh, I, you know, I'll just hire two. What does, it, what does it cost me? This is, no, I think they're repetitive contractors. It does cost you money. Because all of a sudden, they stop posting that they left. Now people say, oh, why they leave blah, blah, blah and go to, you blah, know, blah. Banana Realty. Banana Realty. I'm Tom Ferry. Banana. banana. Hey, Banana. Uh, there's... I think there's a lot of things you have got, to do. Is it really a Banana Realty? And I just to... No, no, no. I got a good segue here when you're done. Good. I, I think there's a lot of hats you need as that entrepreneur. If you're that single agent by yourself, you know, you just need this, this, the business acumen. I think when you become a team leader, you should start any other things. And if you look at the good teams, if you look at the mega teams, you look at like the Eklund Gomes, they have a CEO of their team. There's a, there's a, there's a marketing, there's a, they have a chief marketing officer of the team. They actually run their teams like businesses. You know, you look at any of the successful teams, it's not just the team leader, it's people actually, they realize that, hey, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the operator of my team. I'm the salesperson. I don't need to be the operator. I don't need to know the ins and outs. I just need to go out there and sell because that's what I'm successful at. Hire people around you that can fill the other parts. I was waiting for your segue. Okay, I'm ready. So in, <laughs> in regards to the banana realty, so I, I was listening to a podcast the other day about uh, creating a, a different culture or a different environment or finding a new niche that didn't exist. And so there's this baseball team called the Havana Bananas, I want to say is, is what they're called. And it's similar to the Harlem Globetrotters of basketball, right? Harlem Globetrotters, that's not a real, they play the same team all the time. You go there for the experience, right? Mm -hmm. And so they Wait, looked what do you at... Mean? They're not a real basketball team? They are. Uh, it's just they play a really crappy team every time. Same team. Mm -hmm. Who's, you know... <laughs> so anyways, they, uh, this team, they said, why don't people show up to baseball games? Because they're long, they're boring. You know, if you're not a true baseball fan, you don't want to sit there for nine innings. And, and so they said, mm -hmm. do people care more about the outcome of the game or the experience while they're there? The experience. experience. And, and so they do all kinds of crazy stuff that you wouldn't see at a regular baseball game. And they sell out record numbers. They're, they're now traveling all over the United States kind of with this experience. And they're more profitable than any other baseball team and in, in their bracket, I guess, or whatever you want to say. They're at their level. But they rethought so it. They said, they're the selling experience. the experience. Right. And so I, I think when you look at whatever your industry in, your industry is, what are the pain points what does the consumer look at and say, man, this is awful because of this, this, and this? Is there anything that we could do differently to make that experience so much better? People will pay for the experience. This people will truly pay for the experience. And, and I think 
a lot of times in, in real estate, we forget that, you know, that's what I tell agents all the time. It's like, you're leading with the numbers and the data. Don't leave with the numbers and the data, leave, leave with the feelings, you know, leave with how the person feel. Cause people do things that make them feel good. And if, listen, if you, I'll go to a game where I'm gonna have a good time. I'm gonna have that experience. I'll pay for that experience. I'm getting a weird echoing sound. Do you hear that? It's probably no, a sound it's, from it's Instagram. no, it's, it's no, it's your, it's your no, it's your mic, whatever. You have a boom or something that's bouncing. I hear it. Yep. It's not bouncing. Not anymore. Oh, keep bouncing. Look, so I, I'm going to put this in the comments on Facebook and Zoom. We make baseball fun. Fans first. Entertain always. I like that. <laughs> no, you typing. I hear you type. When you're typing, this is your boom is bouncing. Keep keep bouncing. There we go. So this is the question: Are you an entrepreneur? Do you consider yourself an entrepreneur? I think that's a good question. Do you consider yourself an entrepreneur? Or, you know, are you the are you can just consider yourself a business owner? Where hey, I'm going to the business. Business is going to go. Because again, I don't I don't really think that all business owners are entrepreneurs. I don't. I agree. I think entrepreneur. I think entrepreneur is more of a mindset than anything else. And I think you can be entrepreneurial. I think you'd be entrepreneurial, not even be a business owner. I think you can be entrepreneurial within the company that you're in, if the company allows that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. And and sometimes if you're not, if you just consider your, you came from a job, maybe that might make you a better team member, not a team leader, a team member mm -hmm. where you say, hey, that's a model. People have that out there where, hey, I'll pay you this much each week. This is what you have to do, no matter what. And you're like, okay, I'm guaranteed. Yeah, this is your salary. And if you look at it, if you were the business owner and did exactly the same thing, you would make so much more money. But the mindset that it's guaranteed money just says, okay, I'm going to do this because that's my job. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I'm getting paid to do. It, it's just, it's crazy to me. I agree. Crickets? <laughs> it's, I don't know why it's blasting in my ear. Because it's in your so, ear. So, so listen. Can we I'm all start a GoFundMe for Jeffrey's squeaky chair for the last I was two going. years? So, so we're gonna we're gonna do. No, I'm not gonna say no much. I send him. I send him an office bass, uh, an office exercise ball thing that you sit on a on the ball. At five to 575 Madison and somebody in that building has it. It didn't get past the front. Somebody signed for it at the front desk and it never arrived. So that's the last time I sent Jeffrey anything at the office. You should just ask me what it's, yeah. You should just ask me what it said. Um, Ruins a surprise. And I was going to say something, but I changed my mind. I'm not going to say it anymore. I think shorts with suit jackets should come and be a thing. Putting that out there. That is, that is a thing. Yeah, well, basketball seen players. All the basketball players man. Yeah, but they could do whatever the hell they want because <laughs> they're making exactly. many more millions than me. So I, I just keep Chris, just saw you're with this. me, right? Chris Newton wants to bring it back. No, come on, Chris. Man, that's it. You had a chance to stand with, stand with me in solidarity. You just left me hanging. That's. I thought we were people, but now I know. Ready for this one? Yeah. Sixty percent of first-time people leaders, sixty percent of first-time managers, fail. Wow, I think that's even a low number. But I no, that's actually it's it's actually it's a survey that was actually done. It's legitimate. I'm looking at the statistics right now, and eighty percent of managers have no training, no formal management training within their first year. I believe that to be true. Listen, in real estate, it's probably a much higher number too. Much higher. They're just, and and I think we've said this before. Just because. And mainly, like, usually the people who are really great salespeople don't make great managers. It's different no. skill sets. Different skill sets. Yeah. yeah. 
That's why everybody should take my leadership course. That's going to be released soon. <laughs> you keep teasing it. Don't worry, coming soon. The movie it's that's like, never released. It's it's like twenty. It's like twenty some odd hours. Of course, material. <laughs> it's a long course. Uh, Chris Noon has a question. He says, "What do you believe the reason is for the eighty-eight percent failure rate in real estate?" Uh, poor planning, poor expectations. Yep, I would I would agree. Uh, the seven P's. I had a friend that was in uh, in the Marines. They had this prior precise planning prevents P poor Piss performance. Poor. Well, yep. I was going to say it, but you, and and I think you they come into real estate and they go, well, it's the same thing. They think of it as a business. They don't have a business plan going into it. But if you were going to open a subway, you're going to open up any other business on the on the planet Earth. You'd have to have some kind of plan in place to go to the to bank for for financing or for a loan for a business loan or anything like that. And, and this go, is funny because think about this way: you're financing this business yourself, so you're financing right. your real estate business yourself. If someone was going to come to you and say, "Listen, right. I'm going to start this business. I have right. no plan. I don't know what I'm going to do on day one. I don't know what I'm going to do 30 days from now. I don't know what I'm going to do 60, 90, 120. I have no. It's nothing's written down. It's all up here. Give me money. What would you What would you say? I said I no. watch Shark Tank all the time. I think I said, hey, you know, I I didn't know. Some, you got your projections? No, I was nope. yeah, gonna Shark do it. I was like, know your numbers. How are you doing this? How are you getting there? Great. You have a great business, but what's the plan of getting to the next level? Like it, it all has to be what's your business now? What do you expect it to be? Where are you going in business? You know, it, it, and and knowing knowing your numbers. I'm this is my other thing that I'm fascinated with now, and I'm bringing the aspect of real estate is what's the client cost of acquisition? What does it cost you to acquire customers? People aren't thinking about that. And the lifetime value of that customer. Lifetime value I've been doing for years and years and years. Because if you think of like one lifetime. person is five transactions on the, on the low side, let's say five transactions, and each transaction's $15,000, that's $75,000. Know, I should, lifetime I should value. Actually pull that. I should pull up that lifetime value of a client. I have that someplace. Maybe I'll do that on my podcast on Wednesday. Okay. No need to bring out the good stuff here. <laughs> um, don't you have a three? Yeah. Yep, I do. All right. All right, folks. This is Jeremiah. It's J-Man Monero. Jeffrey Scott Stanton. And we are going to terminate here in just a moment. You will be destroyed. Bye. Uh, Bye. We ended the stream. We're still in. Uh, now, so Anna, we're, still, Anna had, we're still on the air. We're still on the air on Facebook. Instagram.